Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Our government has all been shut down for the better part of a year here in D.C. You should see it. Total dysfunction. And all over allegations that Vladimir Putin somehow hacked our democracy on behalf of Donald Trump. Yet after all this time, the only actual crime that have surfaced during the course of this scandal appear to have been committed not by the president, but by his opponents who have leaked reams of classified material in order to hurt him. That's a felony, by the way, and it's happened a lot, some weeks almost every day. The latest example comes from the National Security Agency, the NSA. A 25-year-old contractor with the name Reality Winner, supposedly her real name, is accused of leaking classified surveillance of Russian hackers. Now, the document suggests an effort to penetrate U.S. election software, though not to change vote totals. Not that details matter in this case. The whole thing just sounds sinister. And that, of course, was the point of the leak, to add the perception that Trump is somehow a foreign agent. Now, Reality Winner seems like the kind of person who might want to make that point. Take a look at her Twitter account. It contains an almost constant stream of attacks on the president she works for, or did until today. In February, she protested Trump's travel ban on Twitter by declaring that, quote, the most dangerous entry to this country was the orange fascist we led into the White House. She later tweeted that Kanye West, quote, you should make a shirt that says being white is terrorism. She retreated Kurt Eichenwald, remember him? His tweet demanding a redo of the election and suggesting that Trump had KKK sympathies, quote, why burn a flag Donald Trump thinks crosses burn much better? Now, this is obviously an intemperate political activist. How did she get a security clearance? We could ask the same question about a lot of people working in government right now, especially in our vast and unelected intelligence bureaucracy. Many of them hate the president. Now, that's happened before in other administrations. People just disagree with the new guy. And when that does happen, those with integrity resign their jobs and they speak their minds in public, maybe even run for office themselves. That's how a healthy democracy operates and has for a long time, but no longer. Unwilling to give up cushy government gigs in the name of principle, they have taken the cowardly route, one that's destroying not just the administration, but making the government impossible to run. Now, for the record, not all leaks are bad, even those that hurt politicians we might support or you might support. The public does have a right to know a lot more than it does, trust us. But these specific leaks aren't designed to help, and they're not helping. They're not attempts by whistleblowers to alert the public to secret crimes. They haven't exposed a single illegal act. They're not about transparency. They are propaganda. They're selectively released to serve a political agenda, a specific one. The permanent political class in Washington hates the democratically elected president. That's what this is about, and it's making the country impossible to govern. Because even government officials need some level of privacy or they can't do their jobs. They can't think clearly. They can't speak honestly. They can't trust that their plans will remain veiled for a time because they need to. Everybody knows this, and that's why normal people don't publish their emails online for everyone else to read, though at this rate, they may be published anyway, including yours. We're joined now by Brian Dean Wright. He's a former CIA officer and Crystal Ball, a former congressional candidate and a senior fellow at the New Leaders Council. Um, so, Brian, you worked over there, and it seems like a lot of these leaks are coming from government employees in the intel community, and they seem reckless. Is that perception right? There's no doubt about that. Yeah, you know, look, we have been warning about this, uh, those of us who have served and are seeing these leaks uh, over the past six months uh, increase in volume and severity. The, the, the challenge that we face in the intel community is this. People believe that they are the judge, jury, and executioner of our political process. It's not all spies. In fact, it's the vast majority of folks. That, they're not doing this. They're doing their, their good work. But there are these people, and they need to be properly vetted. In this case, it just wasn't done. You think? A 25-year-old political activist who almost immediately gets security clearances, did anybody look at her social media accounts? Like, how could that happen? Well, it sure should have. Uh, and, and if it didn't, and in this case, clearly it didn't, I guarantee you the security folks, to include the polygraphers, are going back over how in the heck she got through uh, and why they didn't vet her information. I, I can guarantee you that's happening tonight. Yeah, well, I, I certainly hope so. Easier in hindsight. Crystal, I, I'm not against all leaks. I benefited from many of them. I think the public has a right <laughs> to know much more than it does. I mean that. Yeah. They, they hide too much from us, and it's our country. But these leaks are not designed to inform the public. They're designed to topple the administration, and they paint a picture that is not complete. It's selective, and I think it's misleading and inaccurate. 
What's the point of them other than to hurt the guy in charge? Well, I don't think that's a fair characterization at all. I mean, there's been a concern for a long time, especially up until the point that Bob Mueller was appointed as special counsel. There was a concern that the investigation into Russian, ha Russian hacking in our election would be done in a partisan way and we wouldn't ultimately get to the truth. So if you look at this leak in particular with Reality Winner, this document, the, the classified NSA document that was released here, it doesn't actually have anything to do with Donald Trump. It has a lot to do with our elections and whether our elections are being tainted by Russians and if they're getting involved. And what it shows is that up through October, Russians were still uh, messing with our election infrastructure. Look, there's an election in Virginia last week, next week. So I think that it is uh, reasonable for her to have made the judgment that it was in the public's best interest for this sort of information to be well, out there. Insane. I mean, by the way, that's not actually what it demonstrates, that they were, quote, messing with our infrastructure. It means they, like every powerful foreign government in the world, wants to have more influence here than they do. It doesn't show they affected the outcome of anything No, it doesn't at show all. that at all, and but it does point, show look, they were. If she had concerned about the integrity of our election infrastructure, why wouldn't she bring that to the people in charge of it within government? This is a purely political move. Well, but there are election officials in, in every state, in every county in the country. And so, look, I think she should be prosecuted. I think that it is important that we have information that stays secret in the government. But I also think that if somebody feels that it is worth risking jail time to put something out there in the public eye, then they have the right to do that. So would you say that about, I don't know, an armed robber? If you think it's, if it's worth risking getting shot during, you know, a liquor store holdup, are you virtuous this for doing a, it? I mean, like, this is a very, that's, that's, a very okay. that's a very different situation. I don't think it is. Know. So, so Brian, no, I'm would, sorry, I, you're going to jump I, in. I uh, hold on, it, he, let, let's, let's give this man a say. Sure. All right. Here's the deal, Chris. We are both Democrats, but I got to tell you, I disagree with you on this, and this is why. In the intelligence community, if you have a problem with a piece of information being withheld, and you know what's being done for imp uh, you know, wrong reasons, there are processes, and she had one, right? You go to the Inspector's General Office, you go to the FBI's, uh, you know, various departments that they have that you can go to. We're trained on that. You go to the oversight committees. You go to your member of Congress or a member of Congress. There are systems in play that we in the intelligence community are taught to to engage. Engage in dialogue on. She chose not to. She chose to go to the media to leak something based on her ideology, her goal, her political goal, and encouraging this. And it's happened, by the way, on both sides of the aisle. Washington Post, New York Times is encouraging it. Bill Crystal on the right. They're encouraging these spies to do this kind of stuff, to engage in their own version of, hey, it's my America and I can do with these secrets as I want. That is wrong. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. Chris, I want to ask you a specific philosophical yeah. question. That kind of is the point here. Who's in charge of the country. So voters, whether you like it or not, you don't, elected Donald Trump. That's how the system works. Voters are in charge. A small group of unelected people is saying, we want it, we don't agree with that result, and we're trying to undo it. Which is more democratic? Which is more fair? Which well, is more Tucker, in line with our traditions? I, I mean, it's not even close. I just find it very interesting that we are more concerned about the leaks, which I already said I think she should be prosecuted. I think if other leakers are found, they should be prosecuted as well, just as the Obama administration did. But we are more concerned with the leaks than we are with the fact that the Russians attacked our democracy and that the president's the campaign may have participated in it. They didn't attack our democracy. They did. Uh, that, that's a meaningless wait, 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 wait. Hey, hold on. And if you're interested in crimes and in exposing them to sunlight, and I am, uh -huh. the only crimes that we know about so far are the leaks themselves. So, like, this is innuendo. If they can find evidence that Trump was on the phone with Putin trying to move votes in Ohio, I will applaud the release of that information. But that's not what this is. Tucker, as it, you shouldn't, know. it should not be a partisan issue to want to get it's to the not bottom partisan. I'm of saying what this. happened in our election and whether Look, the president okay. or his team so had anything this, to do with this, that. I mean, that's fairly essential it, to our democracy. Okay. okay, so federal employees are now in charge of that investigation on a freelance basis. Don't we have an FBI? I mean, I kind of thought, I mean, it, Brian, it, isn't that kind of the whole point of having yeah, a justice department? Yeah, we have an FBI, and the director got deal. fired for political reasons, for, Tucker. That's exactly here's what we're deal. talking for, for, about for here. Folks, That's why there's no for, faith in this investigation, because the president demanded a loyalty is, oath from Jim Comey and then fired him when he wouldn't give it, asked is not, him not to investigate Michael Flynn. So, of course, really people are saying actually. this I know is you essential to our democracy. Two things, Tucker, two things. 
two things. One, this is not an either or. We have to do both. Investigate the leaks. Make sure the spies don't get into this regime that they think that this is appropriate. Second, let the FBI do the investigation. We are going to get the results as, as an American public, and we will decide then and there. Do we, do we take these results and, and do we punish uh, President Trump? Or if he's not guilty and there's nothing there, that we go back to the ballot box in 2018 and 2020, and Democrats like me have to stand up and say, here's what we want to do for the country. Get over all this other stuff. It's ridiculous. You don't have to support Trump to recognize what it looks like when the ruling class tries to undo the results of an election. That's exactly what's going That's on. That's not in what's my happening. View. It is. Crystal, Brian, thanks for joining thanks, us. Thanks, Tucker.